Yeah, I went to Lambourne, Lambourne in Bourne. Oh, sorry, Lambourne, yeah, Lambourne, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and I was blessed really because the the trainer was was Peter Walwyn, and he was the the head trainer. He was the best trainer in England at the time, mm -hmm. and um, yeah. So so yeah, it was. I mean, I travelled all that way. You know, I was only like probably coming up to fifteen, and I got on the train, went all the way to to London. Um, well, I went to to got on the train at Liverpool, I think first, then to London. I think I changed at Crew. And um, then to Reading, and then a bus to Lambourne, and and it was a, it was a big journey in a day. Yeah. So anyway, you landed your dream job, sir. When you went to was it when you went to Kidder's Minister that you got it? Oh, sorry, that wasn't it. Was Maxwell's, wasn't it? Yeah, Lambourne. Yeah. 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 So how did you feel when you got? It seemed like you're you know you you landed your dream. Oh wow! You know I think. Um, you know, you're just elated, you know, you just think, great, you know, I'll sign an apprenticeship, you know, I can look forward to, you know, um, uh, to to hopefully riding thoroughbreds and, and, and you know, racing on the downs, because you, you do a lot of prep work, as it were, uh -huh. you know, and get them up to speed, as it were, on the downs and doing fast work and, and, and um, you know, I think, Lambourne itself is a beautiful place and great too. You know, lovely villages round about there. You know, so so I felt, you know, I felt um, I felt really good about it because it was my dream. You know, indeed. But of course, we realised after a short while the dream seems to be a little bit turning, and that you said you felt like you were cheap labour, not just once, but in two occasions. That's right. Um, yeah. How did you deal with your disappointment? Your upset. Oh, well. Well, the first time, um, you know, uh, um, I was I was really really disappointed because because I was walking out of an apprenticeship and they used to, I don't know if it's the same today, but you'd be blacklisted and what it means is that you can't get back into racing. Right. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, certainly not as an apprentice jockey. So, so um, it was just devastating. I mean, fortunately. I could, I was very independent because because uh -huh. I I even had a motorbike then, and wow. I used to I used to keep it in a in a guy's shed. I I was sixteen, so I was able to ride it um, yeah. by that time. But I had it before I was sixteen, so I knew I could get on my motorcycle and drive all the way home, um, which I did. Um, but. You know, I was really devastated, and I didn't know what the future held. But I knew mm -hmm. that I wasn't going to be put on, you know, like yeah. this. You mm -hmm. know, and John Nash, um, the 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 travelling Ed lad, you know, he was so good to me in just taking me to one side and explaining things. It was very brave to do that. Mm -hmm. you know. Now, did you ever actually get to ride in a race? You, you said you didn't no. get any ride. You didn't. No, no. I got to do fast work. Mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that and jumps um but you know um that that was the i suppose the upset in both occasions were were i wasn't going anywhere with maxwell's yard mm -hmm. and um in yardley's yard <laughs> i wasn't going anywhere there it was just corrupt so corrupt unbelievable mm -hmm. you know? um and so, in one sense, I think God had His hand on me and saved me from from a pathway of peril. To be honest, <laughs> excellent. Oh, I just wanted to re recap a little bit. He said, he said, at the age of twelve, you were coming home in a car, and uh, there's the old old saying, of course, nearly never killed a man, but it certainly made an impression on you with the car and what when you leave us the car. Oh, that was when I was. Um, that was when I was in in Kidderminster. Yeah, I'd be about what would I be then? Um, 18, 18, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, um, I think that was that was uh, an awakening mm -hmm. because I think sometimes if you're challenged with death, you know, yeah. And strangely enough, I mean, often I might fall off a horse, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, at one stage, you know, um. 
I was on a racehorse and there was a big truck coming up the the hill towards the corner where I was on the racehorse and 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 um it jumped straight out in front of the truck because wow. there was something flickering in the uh, edge and it frightened it. Uh-huh. But fortunately I had I had my whip and I just brought my whip through and slapped it down the shoulder quickly and it jumped back like a cat. It jumped uh-huh. out and then jumped uh-huh. back and, and I could hear this big juggernaut and he had no chance of stopping. It just had, so so I mean that didn't phase me so much, you know. And right. um but this car accident did, strangely enough. Isn't that strange? Yes, it is how God works. Now, you yeah. said at that particular stage, you said you were born again. For those people who don't know, what does born again mean? Right. Well, basically, it's when you surrender your life to Christ and uh-huh. make a complete opposite turn in the, in the direction towards God. Instead of going in your direction and God's touching your life, you turn towards him and he reveals himself to you. And and as he does, and and you may be convicted of your sin, and you need that, you know that that needs to be sorted out. And when you ask Christ into your life, he just forgives you your sins, and the burdens just lift. You become a new person. Your all things pass away, and all things become new. Uh-huh. And, and and people see in you the Lord. You, you, your heart of hatred becomes a heart of love. So you were about 19 at the 18, 19 at that stage where you, 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 you were born again. Yeah. Uh, okay, you said you were delivered from smoking. Did you do the same for drink? Um, I wasn't a big drinker uh-huh. because, because um, strange enough, I didn't drive and drink then. It was somebody else who was driving the car, not me. But um, when we nearly had that accident, um, but I was never a big drinker, you know. Oh. Not only that, I was too busy in the racing yard, in one sense, uh, and and my heart didn't lean towards drinking, you know. Um, but smoking, you know, I mean, I, I couldn't stop smoking. And when we used to go to the races, you know, I used to buy a packet of Dunhill Internationals, you know, big oh, cigarettes. The posh ones, oh, the yeah. posh ones, yeah, the posh ones, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that happened in an instant. I could never give up. I, I I'd be small. I, I I'd try each day sometimes to give up, and then to get to about twelve o'clock at night, and I just thought, oh gosh, I can't mind. Just I need a sing. <laughs> but God just delivered me like that. Life stories worldwide is on YouTube, and it's very easy to subscribe to our channel. Just click the bell and subscribe and receive notifications of when we are live or simply watch any of our other videos. So check it out and give us a visit. Excellent. Now, of course, you said you got saved and you said, where do I go from here? So you said you prayed and uh, you found a little church. Now, how important is for people when they, you know, they are born again and become Christians, how important is it to find the place to where you have Christian friends? Because you said earlier, yeah. when you had the touch of God, you had no Christian friends in your fellow. So how important is that? That's right. Yeah, it is very important because you can share with them if you've got any problems and mm-hmm. they can point you to scriptures that may build your faith up in the Lord. Mm-hmm. And when you go to church, you might you might be able to go to church with them or a house fellowship or if you're young, to, to youth, you know, uh-huh. um, and it opens up, having friends, you know, opens up new new pathways and new doors. And 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 um, I was surprised just the other week when, when someone said to me, oh, come back for a meal, John, you know. Uh-huh. And um, so I went back for a meal with them, you know, it was just so kind of them. And yeah. this, this is sometimes what you get in... in, in in church church life you know yeah excellent now of course you became a christian and you started preaching to everybody anybody but yeah. it was a little disappointment because you felt rejected because you were set out of the horses by yourself yeah yeah did you feel then that 
even though you become a Christian, your dream is starting to fall apart? Um, I was I was questioning many okay. many things, many things, because I couldn't understand why um, why though God had, had had come into my life, though I'd accepted Christ, why people they just didn't want to know, and they just kind of was pushing me to one side. And I really, um, <clears throat> it was a challenging time and made me as a young Christian think. I didn't understand it, but, I, you know, God had a plan in it. God had a plan in it. Excellent. Now, in all of in all of this, of course, from, from being a young boy to being 18, teenagers to becoming a Christian, where did girls come into all of this? Girls? Yeah. Um. Well, not many when I was racing because I didn't have time because in the yard I worked as the travelling head lad as well as a, a stable lad and training, hopefully training to be a jockey. So I was very busy. Um, <clears throat> but when I did become a Christian, um, I met a wonderful girl, you know, um, that we went out together. Um, <clears throat> but I suppose things didn't really develop until I met uh, my wife, you know, that, that was when I moved back up north mm -hmm. and met her in the church that I was fellowshipping in. Yeah. Excellent. Of course, yeah, that was the second disappointment, of course, in your, in your <coughs> career in that, um, again, you felt like the cheap labour, you decided that I wasn't doing this anymore, so you went back to the garbage. Yeah. But you had no idea of what was going to happen. No. So tell us how you ended up in nursing then. Oh, right. Um it was just when I was in Kidderminster and I come I accepted Christ as my saviour, it just seemed it just seemed to be pointing in that direction, strange mm -hmm. enough. It was so different from what I was used to. And um because I, I mean I was quite rough when I when you know when when I was in horse racing, you know, I was a tough little cookie in, in many ways. I wasn't evil, you know, but yeah, but um I'm sure I have my own opinions. And um, so nursing, it just, I don't know, just just the door seemed to be opening. I don't know why. The Lord seemed to put it on my heart, I believe. And um, I applied and took some tests to get into nursing. And I, I passed the test and started to, <clears throat> to train as a nurse, Excellent. which I think was a fantastic experience um, to see. To see people, you know, who was in need, you know, in many yeah. in many different areas, whether it was on road traffic accident, whether it was on intensive care, or whether it was on surgical or medical, uh -huh. geriatric, you know. Mm. So you moved from dealing with horses to dealing with people. Yeah. Big step. Yeah. Did you manage? I mean, you obviously managed because you're there for twenty years. Um, did you feel that the, well, you're going? I had a break actually. Um, after I'd done some training as a nurse, I moved mm -hmm. back up north because I, I'd, um, I'd met a girl back home. Oh, you I, fell in love. I did, yes. <laughs> and strangely enough, strangely enough, which I didn't know, which I wasn't aware of at the time, but there was a, a, a uh, 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 an evangelistic, evangel, evangelical, evangelistic, evangelical, yeah, evangelistic, yeah, I got the one, yeah, <laughs> yeah, outreach, and and the pastor was praying for someone to come and help because he was driving the minibus and doing all the services and working so hard. So when I moved back up north, I just went and 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 um, started to to help in this outreach and this this church and um and it was just what the minister was praying for so wow. i just got stuck in and um you know just grew as a christian and and did lots of things you know in the church which which encouraged me in my faith yeah excellent and looking back now do you still take a keen interest in horse racing huh in also, I loved the Grand National. I like to watch the Grand National, uh -huh. and I like to watch um, races where there's um, 
there might be lots of money involved because because I know in the the lesser races there can be a lot of cheating and pulling and and stuff. So you can't really cheat the same unless you dope the horse. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you telling me that horse racing is fixed? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you that my that trainer that I used to work for Yardley. I mean, I, it was just unbelievable what he got up to. It was unbelievable, and um, yeah, very much in a sense, um, the races would go the way that he wanted. In so yeah. much so that that about five minutes, he knew his horse was going to win, basically speaking. <laughs> and uh, about five minutes before the race, he would go and and his entourage would put money on. Just five minutes before the race, you've seen the torts. Keep the odds, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that the bookies wouldn't get wind of what was happening, and you must realise by this time he had got the weight down, so it was carrying a very light weight, and its price up. It might be twenty to one or wow. more. You see, and he's off to win, and then when it had won, I would have to go into into what they what they call it basically um the dope box and 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 um the 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 um the vet would come and take a blood sample and a urine sample off the horse because the the stewards would be saying this horse shouldn't have won this race at such a price <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah so i'd have to wait till it till all this was sorted out <laughs> There's no wonder no punters don't win any money in horse racing. Anyway, no. um, you said you, f you fell off your horse. Have you ever fallen off your bike? Um, probably. Um, when I was when we used to have bikes on the track when we. Mm -hmm. If you would like to speak to us here at Life Stories Worldwide Radio, you can simply by dialing plus four four seven nine four three double five zero two eight seven. Call us now. As a youngster, I was always falling off. Um, but but um, I think the bike I've got, well, I've got two, I've got one bike and two scooters. So um, the BMW, I've only let, I've, I've not fallen off it in the sense, crashed it. I've just, uh -huh. um, it's just fallen over be, twice, I think, because I've just lost my footing, you know. Um, what kind of a bike? Do you, what kind of a bike do you drive now? Is it a Harley Davidson or something or a, a Goldwing? No, no, it's a, a BMW F800 GS. So I've had that since 2010. Pretty um, fast. Well, I'm not a speed merchant. It just uh -huh. ticks all the boxes because I've got it. I've got it because um, it's it's more like an adventure bike where I can use it on the road. I can take yeah. it take it down the track or whatever. Um, yeah, it just and I've set it up now where you know I've got the handlebars where I want the seat and everything. I've had to lower it because I'm only small. So you know these BMWs, they make the bikes so tall. Right. It's unbelievable. And and you can't get on you need a step ladder to get on. So so I, I've had to lower mine. <laughs> and did the missus come out with you on the bike? Um oh well, the missus is another story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been divorced. Um, well, what since since seventy? What am I saying here? No, uh, two thousand and five. Okay. Yeah, and unfortunately, a few years after that, um, my ex passed away. Oh, you know, right just at the age of forty six, which was really, really sad. Really mm. sad. Yeah, yeah. One, one or two last questions for you. Were you delighted when you saw Lester Pickett uh, running, uh, riding the winner, double take? Oh, or well, sad. Well, when he when he when he rode double take as a winner, um, it that wasn't the horse that I was leading up at the time when I met Lester. Um, mm -hmm. When I met Lester, I was leading a horse called up called Lutine, mm -hmm. and. Um, if you know anything about Leicester, it mumbles a little bit. And yeah, I'll see months I was shocked. yeah, I was shocked because when I gave him a leg up onto the horse, onto Lutine, he um, he started asking me all these questions. He said, he said, what kind of ground does it like? Does it like running on the rails? You know, 
uh, which hand does it like the whipping? You know, anyway, he's asking me all these questions and I was telling him anyway, I saw him jump off. I think it was at Brighton and, and he jumped off and he run the race as though it took everything I'd said about blue team and he won. Wow. And I thought, I thought <laughs> that's why he's such a great jockey because he, he talks to the lads who knows yeah. the old, you know, and I was just gobsmacked. So, yeah, that was an experience meeting Lester. That's, so that's your claim to fame, amen. Anyway, John, <laughs> thank you so much for speaking to us here at Life Stories Worldwide. Yeah. And we always ask this question to our the guys who come on, or the people who come on. One last question is, you've made many decisions in your life, some good, some bad, but for you, what is the best decision you ever made? I suppose accepting Christ as my saviour, uh, just just that's paramount because my my whole life changed, and and it's great to love people, and Christ puts love in your heart, uh -huh. and when when you love somebody, you don't want to do them any harm or ill will, you want the best for them, and I think when Christ died for us, you know He wants the best for mankind. Mm -hmm. And because we're his servants, when you accept Christ, his love fills you. And 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 you can give that love to others. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for all your stories as well, especially the one about Lester Pickett and the horse. I really enjoy that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so with that, I'm just going to hand back to my brother, Alan. Okay, thanks. Thank you, George. Thank you, John. It's been great hearing you. I've not ever heard your full story before. It's been great hearing oh. you share today. and. Oh, um, we, so. we met just a few weeks ago. You had your motorbike. We met not long, not far from here on your motorbike. Remember? That's right. <laughs> so, I should speak, and yeah, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. But it's been great having you, and thank you so much for sharing so honestly. And I'm sure many people are going to be touched by your your honesty and humility. Thanks, John. It's been Thanks, great. So. Good, good. If you've been blessed today, then I want you to pass it on to other people. You go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you'll find all sorts of information. You'll find the Bible app that you can download to help you. You can also find out how you can get to know God. And I encourage you to subscribe to our channel, Life Stories Worldwide, and tell other people they can watch these stories over and over again on that channel, uh, Life Stories Worldwide. And I would like to, uh, first of all, before we go to ne about next week, I want to pray for... Uh, Marilyn Vernon McCarthy, she's asked for prayer for her brother and brother-in-law who are both in very bad health. So I just wanted to just pray for um, Marilyn's brother and brother-in-law. Father, we just bring to you uh, Marilyn's brother and brother-in-law who are both in bad health. Lord, I don't know exactly what's wrong with them, but you do, Lord. And I thank you. Your name is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. And we look to you tonight as we pray for for Vern, uh, Marilyn's brother and brother-in-law. I ask Lord Jesus for your healing power to touch them both, that they might know uh, uh, something happening in their bodies, Lord, that you will heal them from the, whatever condition they're in, Lord, and that you will be glorified through it, Lord. May you, you touch them, may you minister to them in a very special way, Lord, as we agree together. He said, if two of us agree on earth as touching anything we ask, it will be done for them of our Father in heaven. And John and I agree right now yes, for yeah. Marilyn's uh, brother and brother-in-law to know that healing power. And we yes, thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And uh, I would like to remind you, you can also watch these programs live on our website. Uh, you don't have to go to any special uh, streaming. You can go on our website and watch these programs. Uh, I want to invite you to join us next week, next Monday, 8 o'clock again, for another live story. Uh, Next week, we have Graham Seed. Graham is a former football hooligan, and he spent many years in prison. Uh, he could drink 28 pints of cider a day. His first sentence was at the age of 16, and by the time he was 26, he served another four jail terms. He had lots of experiences in his life, and he's got an amazing story. Tell your friends to join us. And please subscribe on our YouTube channel, Life Stories Worldwide. So thank you for being with us. May God bless you. 
May you know the peace of God which passes all human understanding. And may the joy of Jesus fill your heart. Bye, everyone. Bye. Live Stories Worldwide is broadcast live every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time. We broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, and StreamYard. Why not join us every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time for Live Stories Worldwide.